Okay, number 18. Looking for work again. Just work on this silently. Well, actually, look here. We're given a speed and a time, but no distance, so we got to find that distance. So V is equal to D over T. We could solve for D using our velocity and time. So we have 2 meters per second is equal to D over 6 seconds. D is equal to 12 meters, which we're going to bring over here. Okay, 40 times 12 is 480 joules, choice D. Okay, so number 19 asks for power. I know I haven't gone through power yet with some of you guys, but not to worry, it's a rather simple formula. I'll go over with you guys next class. So power is simply... Let's mark it off, number 19. Power is equal to work over time. So it's a rate of how much work is done per second. So the unit for power, if we look at here, work is done in joules, and time is seconds. So joules per second. Choice C. Number 20. Power output. Okay, so let's see here. We're given a mass. We're given a distance. And we have a time. We don't have work, but we can find that. Okay, our force here is the student's weight, which we don't have. We gotta use. M times G. Oh no, I have to squeeze it in. Okay, what's our distance? 5 meters. Work is then 40 times 5 times 9.8 is... 49 times 40 is... I can't do this in my head. Okay, the answer is 1960. 1,900 and 60 joules. Okay. Well, that's not exactly the answer to this question. We gotta find out what power is. Power is work over time. 1960 joules over 7 seconds. That is approximately 280 watts. So the unit for power is watts. Choice B. Okay. Number 21. Okay, look at here. It's a swimming question. Awesome. All right. If the time required for a student to swim 500 meters is doubled, 500 meters is rather a mid-distance event. Not really my specialty. The most I've swam actually is a 400 meter race. Anything past 400 or actually anything past 200 is actually pretty grueling, but I digress. Okay. So we have a distance of 500 meters, and if, well, there's not really much math involved. What it's really looking at is a conceptual question about power. So here, if we increase the time, that means, what do you imagine? If someone swam a race slower or double the time as someone normally does, then what do you think? It's going to have less power. So if you have time here in the denominator, if you increase the time, if you double it, then the power is going to be the opposite. It's going to be halved right here. Choice A. Okay, next is 22. Alright, if our work is 20 joules and we have a time of 4 seconds, what is the power? Simple enough, work over time, 20 divided by 4, let's not forget units, is equal to 5 watts. 
choice B. Number 23, last on this page. If the work is 250 joules, time is 10 seconds, another plug and chug. Work over time, 250 joules over 10 seconds. Divide by 10, oops, a shortcut. 25 divided by 1 is 25 watts. Choice D. All right, so let's look at number 24 on the next page. We have a work versus time graph. I know I haven't exposed anyone to this kind of graph, and it's asking for what does the slope of this graph represent. So what is slope exactly? Change in y over change in x. What is our y? It's work. What's our x-axis? Time. So work over time, what does it give you? Power. Okay, that's choice D. Simple. Number 25. Looking for time, how long would it take to do 5,000 joules of work if the power rating of the machine is 100 watts? Alright. We have 100 watts as our power. We have our work as 5,000 joules. Looking for time, simple plug and chug, whoops, we have 100 watts is equal to 5,000 joules over time, time is 5,000 divided by 100, that is 50. 50 seconds. Choice B. Okay, number 26. A motor has an output of a thousand watts, so our power is a thousand watts. When the motor is working at full capacity, that means 100% of that power is used. How much time will it require to lift the 50 newton weight 100 meters? Okay. So we have a time. Actually, we don't have a time. That's what we're looking for. We have a force. And we have a distance. Another variation of the power equation is if you change work into force times distance. And you could easily get time that way. Alright, so 1000 watts equals to 50 newtons times 100 meters over T. So 1,000 is equal to 5,000 over T, which is just like number 25. T is equal to 50 seconds. Alright, so I'm going to use a different color here. Let's go back to, ooh, let's try, let's go back to purple. I like purple. Okay. So we have electrical heater. It's, the water absorbs 6,000 joules of energy from the heater in 30 seconds. All right, so we have 30 seconds as our time. We're going to assume that 6,000 joules of energy is our work. And it's looking for the power. Plug and chug. 6,000 joules over 30 seconds. 6,000 divided by 30 is 600 divided by 3. That is 200. Ooh, they put in scientific notation. So 200 is equal to 2 times 10 to the 2. 2 times 10 to the 2. Okay, 28, and let's use, I never used orange before. Okay. Well, we have a bunch of different things here. All right, so we have a weight, which we're not using because we already gave in a force applied. Then 
this is the same as 600 newtons. We have a velocity. What the heck? Where does velocity come from? But we can use it to solve for power. Or power related stuff. Okay. So we're looking for energy. Energy at the rate of, all right. So, quick little thing. Power is a rate of energy. So what this question is actually asking for is power. All right. Another way, once again, to write power is force times velocity. So we have 600 newtons. To be honest, I really don't like this orange color. I'm going to go back to the others. Okay, so 600 times 15 is... Whoops. Wrong thing. 9,000 watts. Okay, which is the same as... 9 times 10 to the third watts, choice D. Time to change to a different color. So next time, guys, vote on your favorite colors. That's what I want you to do. Then I'll write in those colors for the, my next videos. Okay, 2,000 watt motor. That's our power. Lifting vertically a 400 newton weight. That's our force. Constant speed. We're looking for speed. What? Okay. We're going to use this equation once again. Two thousand divided by four hundred is five meters per second. Choice C. Alright, so number 30, looking for power, velocity of 2.5 meters per second, we have a force of 85 newtons, okay, plug and chug. Should be approximately 210 watts. Some of these I'm not actually using a calculator for, I'm just doing the mental math based on approximations. This looks about right. Actually, let's go back to my favorite one of my favorite colors. Okay. It's one of these questions, okay. So, P is equal to force times distance over time. Our force here is going to be MGD over, well, just MG for our force. You multiply by distance and you divide it by time. Distance is four meters. Over three seconds. Ninety five times nine point eight times four is when you approximate that that comes out to choice C. Next. For power, 
be of 8 meters per 2 seconds. Okay. So be careful there. When it's moved at 8 meters in 2 seconds, 8 divided by 2 gets you 4 meters per second. Okay, power is equal to force times velocity. When you apply a force with a certain velocity, that's how you get power. Okay, the penultimate question, number 33. Okay, power is 500 watts. We have an object weighing 100 newtons. Because it's being lifted vertically, that's our force. Our distance is 10 meters, and we're looking for time. Okay, so we're going to have 1,000 over T is equal to 500. 1,000 divided by 500 is T. T is equal to 2 seconds. And now for the very, very last question here, number 34. Okay, we have a time of 10 seconds. We have a distance of 5 meters. We're looking for power. And we have the weight of the girl, which is the same as the force that she exerts. 5 times 10 to the 2 is 500. That's my little shortcut for dealing with fractions and zeros. So power is equal to 50 times 5 divided by 1. So 50 times 5 is 250 watts. Choice C. And there we go, everyone. That is the end of this review. If you have any questions, come see me after school, right before the test. Once again, office hours are Wednesday afternoon after school. See you there.